Hello, hello, hello. Today's video is an interview with the mind behind the game Rogue Genesia, an upcoming roguelite game that is amazing. I think I would like to do more interviews on this channel, so please leave a comment below what you think of this. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. First of all, thank you for like taking your time to talk to me. Um, oh. Do you want to introduce yourself a bit and uh, talk about the game you're working on? Yes, I can introduce myself. Uh, I'm Wadi Ua. I'm from France. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of video games since I'm very young, like four years old. I started with like on the PlayStation playing uh, Rayman and Rayman 2. Oh, yeah, those are good games. Those yeah, yeah, my, my shadowed. And yeah, I grew up with video games through all my life. I started to get interested in the making of video game with mapping on on things like Cube de Soir Breton, Roblox. Mm, okay. Long yeah. before it was popular, like it was 2008. Yeah, that's a while back. Like that, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and slowly I get more used to things in game development, like Later, I started to use um, Hammer mm. for Source Engine. And then it was um, then in 2017, I've made a, a very popular uh, mod on Dota 2, which is called uh, Epic Boss Fight. Oh, OK. I haven't played got... much Dota, but yeah, I got... uh, <laughs> many it was a it was super popular. Like I, I just made it like for testing the tools, and it was fun. I was like, "Wait, there is ten thousand people playing it. Let's continue working on it." And then in one like six months later, there was like million of people who downloaded it. So it was huge. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Then later, I've got into uh, interest myself into game development at the same time. Uh, I've been starting to uh, to enter a school in art school because I was doing mm -hmm. modeling, 3D modeling since I was 13. Which, so I wanted to push it professionally. Yeah. Which program did you use? Uh, uh, when I was very young, I was using uh, Cinema 4D for like the tray yeah. on YouTube, like stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I w I have worked with that in school as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was it was a thing. Yeah. Uh, and then later, when I went to my game art school, um, I started to use Maya. Uh, yeah. And Maya, um, a substance, mm. substance designer, substance painter, and stuff like that. Okay, cool. At the same time, when I continued to work on Epic Boss Fight, I was very annoyed by Valve doing update on Dota that break everything. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. So I was like, I was like, okay, I would just go on on uh, a proper engine for making game like Unity. Mm. And at this point, I've do a few few prototype with Unity on on my side. We uh, was also studying in my school. I slowly uh, specialized myself into technical artists. Like I was doing a bit of programming, but it wasn't something I was uh, comfortable in back then. Yeah. And later in 2019, I've been working on a with a small studio, which is my previous uh, editor for Rock Genesia, which is Yura Corp. Mm -hmm. uh, I've made a blog post about uh, me getting out of the publishing deal. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, at first I was a um, uh, um, interny back there. Mm, okay. And then I've been uh, in a friendly relationship with one of the director there, and okay. with, uh, their game was a bit of stuck. Mm. We started to work on a plugin for Unreal Engine, which is called um, Worldscape, which, mm. which is a planet generation uh, plugin for Unreal Engine. Oh. And I've worked on a whole the code on that. Knowing that I never did C++ and I never work on Unreal Engine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was uh, a crash test, but to be honest, we did very good. So it was then that I entered Yola Cup with some shares mm. in it. And uh, later on, I wanted to work on my own game. And since I 
didn't know how to publish a game on Steam. Uh, to be honest, it's very simple, but I was very ignorant back then, so <laughs> they helped me with that, and they took a very good share of the of the revenue. So ah, okay. Mm. When did you start working on Rogue Genesis? Oh, it was uh, at first. It was in February two thousand and twenty-two. It was a completely different idea. Like the name was Idle Wave, something like that. Yeah. And the idea was to have a idle part where you build a sort of city colony, something like that. And you would have some run where you could where you could get, uh, obtain money, resources, and and some other stuff like completing quests in the survival like uh, loop. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I worked with at, uh, on it with a friend. Which in the end we had totally different ideas, so we <laughs> stopped working on that after two weeks. So it was just a small project, nothing very serious. Mm-hmm. And after that, uh, like three months later, I was watching a video of a French uh, uh, content creator which was playing Run Guard. Run Guard. I don't know if you... Run Guard. It's sort of a Piggle and uh, Slays and Spy Omics. Ah, okay. I haven't seen it, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's not very now. <laughs> yeah, I was watching it and I was like, hey, hey this sort of gameplay with a uh, Slayer Spire map would work very well with uh, so Vampire Survival, so let's make it. <laughs> so I reused the start of prototype I've been done back in February. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is happened in May. So I started working on what is now Rock Genesia back in May 2022. And then I spent too much time on it. Like I was working 10 to 15 hours a day. Wow. Continuously so for like three months until uh, the release of the game. But is this your full time job? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's, that's cool. Uh, so, which engine did you work in? Was it Unity? Uh, yes, Unity, because Unity. Uh, Unreal Engine have some nice visual, but it's very hard to work with. Like, you, you can get some pretty good results easily, but when you want to get that specific look, it's very hard. Mm-hmm. And since I have a lot of knowledge in rendering, because I've been specialized myself in technical artists and stuff like that, I know how to use the Unity engine to get the render I want. So mm-hmm. in the one, I prefer Unity also on the coding part. It's much ma- it's much more freedom mm-hmm. because Henry, you have to do it the Unreal way. Otherwise, and the engine is going to just get in your way. Yeah, I, I have some experience with Unreal. And yeah, it's <laughs> very much that, yeah. And I, I have some experience with Unity as well, but I'm not a coder, so that has been kind of hard for me. Yeah, uh, Unity can be hard on non-coder if they don't have the proper tools for, yeah. for using it. And that's why I think Unreal is so cool, because you don't really need that background at all. Mm. But as you say, it's kind of limiting you in what you actually can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, But I mean, I've, YouTube is so great, you can learn almost anything online. So. I mean, you can learn to use Unity if you want to as well. Yeah. It's kind of cool. But then you, you kind of self-taught as well in everything then. Uh, in uh, everything except uh, 3D modeling and making textures all like because I've done a school. But yeah, I would say 70 to 75% of my skills are self-taught. Yeah. So it was experimenting, searching online, <laughs> getting feedback, and just searching. Like it's... Uh, yeah, because most of your assets in the game are 2D. So have you created uh, yeah. all those by yourself? Uh, I've made, uh, at first I've used uh, some very few asset pack. Okay, yeah. Because it was for the demo. Mm. Like at first the character was from an asset pack, but I've done, I've done every, written every frame and I've written a little bit of the design. Yeah. I okay. think I can grab, uh... wait, can I try to find the, the Arnold image of the of the character. It's very similar, but I've done I've written the character because it was uh, it was just an asset and it's rare to have the main character just being a free asset on the internet. Yeah, but that's smart. Just... Like do, then you have already a base to work from. Yeah, yeah. It's helped a lot on defining the style. Yeah. But a uh, great inspiration on style of the game was um Octopus Traveler. It was it was a target in terms of artistic uh, style. Yeah, it feels very much like Octopath Traveler. Like that, that brought the, the pixel art to a new level, it felt like, when that came out. Like with, with the yeah. nice animations in it and uh, yeah, subtle things. And, and that's what I love about your game as well, because it feels like, it feels like almost like a miniature set. 
Like you have that when you're filming a town and it's blurred around the edges. It feels like a miniature set to it. It feels really cool. Yeah, it was it was intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that the vision from the beginning as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a very clear idea on the style of the game because I always like the style of uh, Octopus Avo, like the blur in background, blur in foreground, and having yeah. this sort of um, uh, pale. I, I don't think it's the right term, but the term of color, which is a bit dark. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Uh, oh, I have a... It's not a very good image, but of the old character sets. Oh, yeah, you you you, you can see it's a bit similar, but it's also uh, very different. Yeah, yeah, that's one. true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, it was also... The, back then, I was using a sprite for enemy and the character. Mm. Uh, enemy, now the... I think the only enemies are still used... Uh, from the asset pack on the update 0, 0. 0.10 is the goblins, mm-hmm. the small one. Yeah. Uh, but all the rest are um, either made by me. As uh, first and second zone are all made by me, in time of me. And later it was um, people have paid to work on that. Okay, cool. So and I can focus more on the programming. Yeah. In what program are you? What program are you using to create those? Uh, right now, I'm using Asset Pride. It's okay. a very good, uh, mm. very good tool to, to them now. At first, I was using Photoshop, but it's not the most adapt uh, tools. No, no, that's I. I'm not the biggest fan of Photoshop. It's kind of complicated. Yeah, yeah especially with a recent change in time of service and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very glad to moving out of uh, Photoshop. And then you have also put in some 3D models, like the box, yeah. the arena. I think is 3D as well. Yeah, the the also boss enough. arena is two D. There is a few one like where in the intro where you spawn, there is a sort of town stone or stuff like that. Yeah, it's three D. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. There is also the river. The terrain is a, is a bit of three D uh, too, mm-hmm. and the new zone that will be coming in the next few days as well as a lot of three D. Mm. It works so well because it's so small elements. Like it doesn't take over the whole game. It, it, it blends very good with the graphical choice i mean the the new zone has a lot of 3d okay <laughs> <laughs> like everything is in, uh, uh, give me a minute i will try to get some screenshots like for the um, star selection i use more and more 3d okay oh, okay yeah. the, the environment and even inside the game I, i've used a lot of 3d on this new environment do you want to go back and add more 3d into the older areas as well uh, mm, Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I don't think it's very important to add uh, those there because uh, the new zone is is the first one which happened in a human made uh, mm. structures. Ah, okay. Where okay. Other is in natural environment, so it's very different. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Because everything that's in in three D in the game is like made. It's non natural. Like everything else is just two D, uh, except mm. for uh, the. Uh, environment of the stash selection for the volcano. Ah, okay. Which is a bit of 3D, which was made in ZBrush. <laughs> ah, right, ZBrush as well. And then I worked on that, yeah. Ah, cool. Uh, but th- yeah, then definitely it's, yeah, you had the vision for the game already before you started. Yeah. I mean, I did not have a vision for everything. No, but... of course, but like the, the, the basics and how you yeah. wanted it to look. Exactly. Yeah, nice. I, in in the in the scene now, there are a lot of games like roguelike games, roguelite games, and that's your foundation as well for the game. Do you know? Do you know why that is? Do you do you have an idea of this, or uh, why I want with a roguelike uh, game? Yeah, like that uh, feels like the usual thing to choose when you're an indie developer right now. Yeah, there is multiple reasons. First, uh, I love roguelite because I've played a lot of them. And I was like, so very frustrated with of a lot of roguelite do, especially on the meta progression side. Um, I love having a ton of upgrade, having some dip in your choice and stuff like that. And the only game that's really, at, uh, that's really have a lot of depth in it for me is uh, Binding of Isaac. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people love that game. And Many other roguelites are very thin in terms of 
uh, dips. Like you have a few builds, but it's always the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you always try to get the same thing. And there is often a very big RNG component, which don't allow you to get the style of thing you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to me, the RNG in a roguelite is important because it adds some variety, but it should just be a bit of variety. Like the player have to adapt, but it kind of it should also have the power to get in the direction you want. Yeah. In of game. I I think um, progression and like um, like you don't want the game to be too stale. Like you don't want it to yeah. be repeat the same thing over and over again. Like obviously you're repeating a game loop, but it should evolve that, with you as you get better. Yeah, that's one of my issues with, for example, uh, um, uh, Risk of Rain 2, which is a very good game. I've played a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that as well. Uh, it's often very repetitive, like game, especially when you play with uh, Rune of Commandment. <laughs> yeah. And I get a bit of frustration with that game as well because it's hard to choose exactly what you want to build towards. You kind of have yeah. that random element that kind of takes you off the build path you kind of want to make as well. Yeah, uh, it's lacking a bit of control where you can choose where to go. Yeah. There is something like the printer, which is a good idea, but I think there is not enough of them or they, exactly. they tend to show you items that you don't care. Yeah, and th- that's why I love like um, Death Must Die. I think that's an up and coming roguelite that is really well executed as well because they have picked uh, the big important parts from all the games. I- I've played uh, a bit of it too. I mean, I've played many Vampire Survivor like like there is a yeah. thousand, so I can play every every single one of them. Yeah, but I've them. played all of them and um, uh, Death Must Die Vampire Survivor, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've played a bit of Potato, but to me, it's not a vampire survival. Like, like a lot of people like to put it in the same basket, but to me, it's very different. Yeah, and, and that's why I like Hades as well, because it has the elements, but it's a different type of game. Ah, it's a completely different game. Like, yeah. it's, it's a roguelite. Yes. Yeah, but it's not a, a roguelite. type game. Like no. every, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my big frustrations with survival game overall is, like, you can tell it, they just copy vampire survival a bit too much. Like, it yeah. has a big uh, XP bar at the top and you have limited slot and it just mm. it just uses the same mechanic but too samey for me it reached out why I wanted to make something very different for Roglindia on this part yeah uh, what is the game I have one that uh, Soulstone Survivors have you yeah. Played? yeah like a I... little bit but I really couldn't get into the game like I don't know I love the the build potential there and the flexibility in characters and that the, you have to play kind of a long time to unlock the big skill trees for every character. But what I hate in that game instead is that it's a box, a, a map that is a square box and, yeah. and nothing is happening. You're just killing the same enemies, the same bosses. So that kind of gets stales instead. Yeah, uh, I understand. Um, um, I have my own issues because I'm very... Uh, because I have not a lot of knowledge in game style and stuff like that, but I don't really like the art style of the game. Ah, okay, yeah. Right. yeah. The main issue is that it's, it's very based on the Sinti mm. uh, asset pack, which is fine, but there is some place where there are some very different uh, style, like some textures are very flat and others are very stylized, yeah. and some others are slightly realistic. So, yeah, I mean, in person, I'm very sensible to the sort of thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, that, that shows, like, your game is very... I love the style of your game. And it's Soulstone Survivors, I, I kind of have an issue with it as well, but then I like the progression and the gameplay, so it kind of neglects the, the bad graphics. Yeah. yeah. How, how much have you thought about innovation in your game? Like... Have you just created a game you want to play, or are you have you, or have you thought about like, hmm, I want to push the boundaries in some areas? I, I, I mean, most of the new content in the game is like, how can I punch what is possible in the game? Like, I'm not thinking like I want to add this into the game or add this into the game. It's like, if there was a mother which wanted it, which wanted to add new things into the game, what is the limiting factor? And then was it like. This is limiting. I will try to make something that would push these limits and then add it into the game. Mm. It was the case for a lot of things, and I like to push uh, the limit on that. And in the end, it had a lot of variety in what is possible in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it makes the game very moddable. If any for now, there is not a lot of mod because there is a lot of data that breaks stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you have, like Soul Source the Virus, you have also included a lot of items and a lot of flexibility in how you play your character or evolve there your is, character. There is mouse and two outrend soul card. Like just the soul card, the thing you get when you level up. Yeah. There is maybe more than 50 artifacts, which is the item you can sometimes find in the game. Yeah. And on top of that, there is talents, there is social upgrades, there is now equipment, yeah, which have a procedural component. That's so. cool, that's cool. And I kind of got um, surprised when the weapon was able to be upgraded and evolved as well. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, to me it was the basic because it's in Vampire Survivor. It's like the super, uh, super cool stuff. Like, you upgrade your weapon, it's just how you beat the game uh, when you you don't know where. So to me it was important to add it. but. I didn't want to add it very too soon into the game. Mm. Like since the game is is scattered in world rank, like you start at F, you go to E, to D, to B, stuff like that. Yeah, and C B in between, of course. <laughs> uh, well, I, I wanted to make edge difficulty like F rank is like the, the it's like the tutorial, like it's super easy. Ninety mm. percent of people can finish it easily. Like it's made to be super easy. Yeah. Then you come to E, which is slightly harder. I told a new mechanic like the blacksmith. Right. And I have a few small difference left and right, which is there to get a bit of um, introduction for player to know a bit more of the systems and comes the D rank, where mm. I introduce the um, elite modifier, like they can sometimes split, sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they move faster and stuff like that. Mm. In addition, there is a new type of stage that can appear, which is uh, the Swarm Elite, which is like a stage where there is a ton of elite everywhere, like <laughs> oh. just big monster. Yeah, yeah, I might have encountered that, yeah, now that you say it. Yeah, and I try to introduce new mechanics with new difficulties, so player can get used to stuff. Like when you complete the A-Rank for the first time, you unlock the talent system. Mm. Which is a new way of meta progressing. Like you can equip a limited amount of talent. The amount of talent you have depends on how far you are into the game. Mm. So the more you progress, the more possibility, choice, and mix you can have. So the game also open in terms of possibility and complexity. So it to me it's important to start with a game which is simple in terms of mechanic and how deep you can get and slowly introduce new mechanic to the player. So it gets Reach and reach as you continue pro to into the game, and you don't feel like it's repeating. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Like, and I like your progression system because as you like get better at the game, you unlock new stuff, and it gets harder. So it's really cool. Like, it, it should be like that, and it gets kind of hard. It gets insane when when you have an entire screen full of enemies and they're barely dying. Like, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I I recently yeah. unlocked the summoner as well, and yeah, that. That becomes crazy quick as well because you get so many like allies helping you. Yeah, it's the summoner is super strong in early game, but it falls a bit in terms of power later into the game. So it's a character that's very strong for some challenge, which has very hard early game, but get easier later on. Yeah. So I also like that. Uh, um, challenge is also something I've added into the game very soon, like it was in update zero that seven, which is the update after the release. Okay, yeah, okay. It added the challenge, which is uh, completely copied uh, copied from uh, either game. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of either game, and I love the, the idea of challenge. Like, you get some limitation on you, but yeah. if you completely it, you get some new reward and stuff like that, which is a great incentive to push yourself. And then, then there is some challenge, which you have to play in a very different way, so you have to think. Mm and discovers a different bit of the game as to propose. So it's avoid the stale uh, situation when I love the game. You just do the same bit again and again yeah. and again. Yeah, I like that as well, that you can mix it up and, and like do those on the side. That's it's perfect. Uh, and uh, you have... A f I don't remember how many characters there are. Are there like five you can unlock or how many? There? there is a little bit more. There is some secret one. Yeah, because I have that many. Two yet. secret one. Okay. Uh, I I never remember how many characters there are because there are some character which has just troll like the doggy one. 
mm. which is just the main character with that dog head. I was like, all right. It was just a meme from it. It was just to annoy the, the Twitch chat when I was streaming <laughs> uh, back then. Like they all the back then they wanted a, a pet. Yeah, yeah, you have uh, that would PC. follow you. Yeah. yeah. And at that time, I didn't want to spend time on a pet because to me, it wasn't something important, but they insisted a lot. So in the end, I made it a DLC. But yeah. at this moment, I was like, okay, you annoy me. I will make the, the, the dog rod, <laughs> the dog rod. So I made, <laughs> I just take it, the character, made it a head and, <laughs> <laughs> and they get disappointed a lot, but it was funny. <laughs> and I added a, a burn in the desert map on the survivor E rank. You can find it if you. Oh, okay. If you follow some scalp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try to yeah. it. Uh, right do you have many is. more characters in, in development, or are you kind of capped at the characters you have designed? Uh, there is no cap. I have a few ideas, but the main limitation to character is not the cut because it's easy to make, but the, the graphics. Like, uh, a character is usually two to three weeks of work for animation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it can it can delay a lot, and mm. I prefer to have few characters that change a lot of you play the games, and a lot of characters which has a bit of different because characters are they are very detailed with a lot of animation. Yeah. Contrary to a game like Vampire Survivor, which is very simple character with very limited animation, so it's easy to make a lot of them. Yeah. And I mean, you already have so much stuff in the game. It must be a nightmare to balance the game. Uh, a little bit, but to be honest, uh, not that much because I'm I'm very close with the player on the Discord. Like I discuss with them almost every day, okay. so I know what is strong, what is weak. I try to balance it. I so try to un to understand uh, what is the place of an item of upgrade somewhere, mm. because my mentality on that is it's fine to have something which is super strong if it's super hard to obtain. Like, mm. if you have to make a very specific setup or spend a lot of level to obtain it, then it's fine if it's super strong. Like, it's a reward for the player who wants it to add. Yeah. But what I want is to avoid is something that is strong and easy to obtain. Mm. Like, they just get stained and player will always get it and it will always become the same. Uh, so I want to avoid this sort of case. Okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, there is... Uh, in the game, there is a few... Uh, some meta in the way you can gain damage, which I try to always shake up a little, shake up a little bit a new way. Okay. But there is a seven main way. So the main, the, the classic way just to build damage, like the yeah. power, which yeah. is, uh, uh, I'll change the name of the stat to power because damage is now a purpose of something else. So there is a power, which it just increase your damage. It's simple. There is a metal transmutation build where you build a lot of defense and then transform the defense into power, mm. which become damage. Yeah. So this allows you to get a lot of defense so you can play a bit more risky and still provide a good amount of damage. Yeah. Then there is a um, uh, fanat... Uh, wait. Uh, uh, forgotten the name. <laughs> yeah, the way. Uh, give me a second. Very checking game. Uh, the alert, the alert build, which increase your damage based on your negative defense. Oh. Which is much more stronger than the meta transmutation, but it's much more risky. And there is a lot of uh, cards that work together with them, like the Divine Shield uh, that protect you from one, two, three, four, uh, four, eight. Yeah. Based on your fest, which is a new stat that it, that is added by the card. So the game, mm -hmm. yeah, it's an example of why uh, of how I like to push the limit of the game. Like I was like, I want to be able to create new stat from a card. So I made one that <laughs> make a new stat from a card, and then I made a build with that to make it interesting, to make it as an example for model. Like if they want to add their own stat, yeah, because that's, that's uh, perfect. Yeah. Because uh, I like like in some uh, in some uh, webtoon or manga like when in a video game represented in them, so it's like the character that unlock a new class and then it has a new stat which have some very specific uh, work and so like a good example I have in mind, which I hesitated to implement something similar, uh, is a stat which is named Rift in the in the universe. Mm -hmm. 
which uh, simulates the f uh, which uh, simulates the uh, higher level for you. Like if the enemy is higher level than you, it reduces the level uh, difference, yeah. and if you are higher level, it's increases it. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, an interesting idea for us that and uh, I didn't use it, but so I've I wanted to explore this sort of thing. So this sort of thing. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's interesting. Not. <laughs> Definitely. I, I like to to get ideas from everywhere, like from video game, from uh, manga, webtoon, from series, from film. Yeah, I, I'm open to. Yeah, but that's thinking out the, outside the box because so many games these days get stale. There are so many games yeah. releasing. Like, you want something new. Yeah, so as is in one of the reasons why I made this game is because I see many roguelite which is too similar to me, like. I'm getting a bit bored of it. I want something. Uh, to me, I get bored into a game when I understand everything there is to understand. Like, I know everything about the upgrade or everything about the unlock. I, I want a game to have a sense of mystery, of yeah. discovery. To me, it's super important. Yeah, and I mean, you want to have fun in the game and you want it to last. So, I mean, that's important as well. That, that yeah. you can achieve different builds and try different things. Like, that's so important. Uh, to me, it's important uh, in a game. It's not just yeah. You have to farm. To look. You can farm a little bit. It's fine, but just farming to farming with no progression in between your session or stuff like that can be a bit boring. And having no new toys to play with is also boring. So this is also why to me it's important in Rock Genesia to almost unlock a new thing every run. Like every run, you get something. Yeah, 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 and that's definitely the case. Like. <laughs> There are still <laughs> things you find. It's it's kind of cool. Uh, your game is in early access. Like when did exactly. you uh, felt like it was ready for early access? Uh, to be honest, back back then I wanted to wait a little bit more before releasing the game, but my publisher back then pushed me a lot to release the game as ah. fast as possible. Mm. So to me, it was published like one month too early. Okay. So to me, the good time for early access release would have been for update 0 0.7, which added the, the D rank. Mm. It's added the challenge and stuff like that, which added a lot of content to the game because one of the main uh, negative point about the game back then was not enough content. Like mm. you add E rank, uh, F rank, E rank, and then you, you have, you're, you're done yeah. in the game. So. Yeah, like, it was a... that's smart of you of wanting that. It's sad that they pushed you into it. Yeah. Uh, there is also another reason I would have liked to push um, the game first off. It was because when the game was released, mm -hmm. uh, Vampire Survivor was still at $2. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, it would have been hard to push the price of the game higher than Vampire Survivor back then because there was very few content. And I couldn't say it's better than Vampire Survivor because it wasn't. Now I'm more confident into the content of the game, what the game has, so mm. I'm fine with pricing higher, but yeah, back then it would have been harder. And then uh, on 0 0.7, right, Vampire Survivor won for five dollars, and the game content was much more rich. So I was fine with this price. Yeah. I always try to price the game like uh, in, in all access. Like if you buy right now, is the game worth it with how much you spend on it? Like it's about an investment, but I want to make sure the the player has its own value for what it gets right now. Even if I stop working the night mm. on on the game, I want them to to feel like they they get the value out of the game. Yeah, but then you at least you have thought about it quite a lot. It feels like so. I mean, the game is under ten bucks, so I would say it's a very cheap game. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah I mean, the in, in the vampire survival style of the game, it's a bit expensive, but in terms of a roguelite, it's super cheap. Yeah, th that's true. Uh, that is true, yeah. So, to me, it's important to price a game based on the other game around. Like, what your game is going to get compared to what does your game as value compared to the game? Like, player think like that. I myself think like that when I purchase a game as a player. Like, I like to compare it with the other game. So, yeah. I know it's a bit complicated. I get a little bit of backlash when I announced the final price for the 1.0 release from player. Okay. Have you which is yeah, the planet price is fifteen bucks. 
Okay, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, so I think that's reasonable too. I've I even asked on my Discord uh, uh, what people think is a good price. Mm. It was there is a few possibility, and I've chosen the one which feels to me the most uh, which which one it was the most voted one. <laughs> And oh. secondly, if it's the most uh, reasonable, like yeah. there was an option for 20 bucks, but to me it's a bit expensive. There yeah. was another one for 10 bucks, 12 bucks, and something like that. But okay. Yeah, I think over 20, like that feels so premium to me. It almost feels yeah. like, yeah, like an A game. You need to have a lot of polish and yeah. a lot of content. Not that your game doesn't have that, but I. You also in, want the player base this, to play the game and people to enjoy. I, I mean, I mean, a game at uh, twenty dollars. Like, uh, I mean, to my to my idea, you have to it, either it have to be in a uh, John uh, John price. Those game are pricey, like uh, factor you like game, which is often between the thirty and forty dollars for a good game, mm. a good British game. In roguelite, usually it's uh, tw for twenty twenty five dollars. You have stuff like Hades. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh yeah, you have Ades, you have uh, which is a bit different with Hollow Knight, which is similar in price. So mm. the competition is very high. Yeah. So you have to compare to this game at those price to know if you should price your game at that. Like I don't feel like I could compare myself to Ades, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean you could surely sell it to twenty bucks at, at release. I, I wouldn't think that's too much, but I, I think it's smart to price it at fifteen. That feels yeah, like I don't yeah, know where Hades went into, that, but that's like almost like a double A game at this point. Yeah, there, there yeah, so like thirty. Yeah, yeah, so there are many working on the game. Like, and I'm the yeah. I'm most alone on this game, and I'm not gonna play the game with uh with the same as a game with twenty or thirty people working on it. Yeah, 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 and like yeah, effort and stuff like that. Yeah, you have to consider a lot when pricing. Yeah, sure. it's a very it's a very difficult uh, topic. Like a lot of indie developer like to uh, put a price which is too low, mm, which is yeah. also the case for me because uh, as a time Vampire Survivor, which was very low price and stuff like that, so it pushed me to a low price. Mm. But yeah, it's very hard to put a price on your game and make sure that people don't feel like it's overpriced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. B because underpriced, I think, is worse than overpriced almost. Because uh, you need, yeah, you need to get some value. You have you have created an experience like a product. Yeah, like uh, one two bucks. I feel like you you need to do something else with your game almost, like <laughs> expand it or something. Yeah, there is also another thing that where game at low value of uh, price of um where player we feel like it's a bad game. Like a five dollars game is is a bad game because I think the developer think his game is bad. So. Mm. There is also this this part of player, which is why I want for a fifty dollars game, a uh, fifty dollar price for the one point zero release. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of story about about uh, pricing. And <laughs> it's a complicated matter. Uh, was the game always supposed to drop into early access? Like that was the goal. Yeah, yeah. You wanted, uh, I wanted the feedback. To... Yeah, to me, feedback is super important. Uh, I mean, when I've made the mod epic boss fight back then, I had a lot of feedback, and it was. Super helpful to, to balance the game yeah. and stuff like that. For me, it's playtesting is like the best thing that exists to, to make a game. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good as well to get it into the hands of the players that are actually going to play the game and see what they think yeah. about it. Uh, most of the time, especially when you're a, lot, a few people on the game, like you, you all, almost always aren't thinking about everything that goes into a game. Like, yeah, it can be very difficult. I was confident in my game because even uh, people around me like couldn't stop playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I know it's a good game because even if people don't want to be nice and play the game and tell you, hey, it's nice, they won't run the game. No. Like they will stop playing because they don't really care. <laughs> but if they run into the game again and again and again, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a perfect like benchmark to say that. Yeah. Yeah. People around me love the game, so it must be doing something right. Uh, yes. Cool. Um, how, like you, we mentioned earlier, the you have separated from your publisher, like that was, did that impact you a lot when, 
like the one uh, developing the game, or did you just continue as you normally do? I consider it as normally do because they didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> to me, I... it feels like it's supposed to be stressful. Like I- I'm doing this game, and they supposed to help you, and then they're like yeah, not but doing shit. They didn't do any anything. Oh. Like um, I mean, they didn't do nothing, nothing. But like what they did was. Had no impact. I had to, like I said, I had to find myself for so search by myself for finding workforce. Like mm. when I'm searching for an animator or for a pixel artist or stuff like that, most I, I had to feed them myself. For the translation of the game, I have to set up thing for like community tra- translation. No. For marketing, like the only thing they done in marketing was I think is sending is paying one small French streamer which wasn't doing video game. <laughs> To play the game and it had no impact. Yeah, because it feels like marketing is kind of the most important I, part. It's super. I, it's it's not. La- no, but I mean, from, most, from the, what you want from a publisher, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the most. I mean, uh, I spent a lot of time searching into marketing because my publisher wasn't doing it. Mm. So I've learned a lot of things. And in, to to market a game, the most important thing is to have a game that's marketable. Yeah. Like you have to have a nice visual to have. Uh, to make the idea clear to the player, like what mm. is the gameplay like? So the the UI interface is super important for that. Yeah. Like you will have a very different interface for uh, RTS, for FPS, or for a vampire survival like game. Yeah. Stuff like that, super important. Yeah. Uh, we want I feel, to yeah, I feel like I'm, a lot of indie developers are missing, like when they're doing a trailer, when you see these PC game shows, they're doing a trailer of their game and it looks like crap you can kind of see what the game is supposed to be but the trailer is showing the wrong things like that gives the worst first impression ever like i think that's so important to make a good trailer yeah it's, it, it's kind of to be uh very hard i mean it's making the trail of rock and was very hard too and very late like and as an example of what felicia not doing their work mm. uh the trail of the of rock and i've obtained it with someone i found on my side not sent to my publisher yeah. After more than one year and a half after the release of the game. <laughs> but I mean, your so, game is at least very obvious what is happening when you just yeah. show a couple, you know, 10 seconds and you kind of know what this game is. Yeah, but it's also a trap in itself because when you show the game to someone, they think it's just a vampire survival like game. Like, true, true. That's they the don't downside. know this. So it's, uh, yeah. uh, it's very hard to get out of this. Yeah, of this, uh, but that's where your ladder. art style really comes in because that really helps. Like it looks really nice. Yeah, the so, so art style helps a lot on that. But it's also very hard to push it in the material. Like it's very, it's really not easy. It's a big issue. Like, and people still don't notice that you can choose your path. You have a very roguelite part of the game and a lot of people miss that in the trail so there is still some improvement to to be done about that yeah yeah um how close are you to finish the game do you do you have a time <laughs> time slot for it for 1.0 uh, i mean if you ask me one year one year ago i would have said you three months <laughs> 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 but yeah i mean game is lost developing a game is a lot of surprise like in terms of how much I wanted to the game, I'm very close to finish. Yeah. But there is a lot of things that take more time than I expected. Like, for example, animation. Yeah. Like animation for enemy and stuff like that. I like the things that delay everything. Right now, even for the update that will come next week, mm. uh, there is missing animation <laughs> <laughs> for some monster. There is even some monsters that don't have the sprite. So, uh, I mean, I could delay the update for like one month, two months, but uh, on my side, on the side where I'm, I mean, I'm working a lot on the programming, balancing, game design stuff. I've done everything I want to do on this update. So to me, pushing back the update is just me not doing anything for two months. So mm. I prefer to push the update, having some sprites that is not finished or not animated right now because it doesn't change much of the experience of the game. Mm. Especially as it's content that's come late in the game, so player are very much into the game when they reach this part, so they're not too annoyed by some missing animation, especially as the game is still in early access. Yeah, yeah. So I think it should be fine, <laughs> even if I want it, it to be finished. And then for the 1.0, there is two big things I want to work on. 
with the first one it's uh, a rank uh world rank difficulty so it's the last one yeah i plan to be and uh, a bit of free work on the of our the talent system work to have a bit of a skill tree in them mm. so you have a bit more choice a bit more depth in it and make it more interesting than just leveling up and getting some minor boost in in the effect mm. uh, and after the 1.0 release are you Thinking about doing more content, I thought I read something about it. Uh, yeah, there was there was some discussion. I personally don't want to continue working after one point zero. Like one point zero is like I think I've done everything I can in the game. Like I fetch every idea I get, <laughs> I've made every content I get, and I think that adding more to the game would just feel a bit bloated. I mean, mm. to to my vision, to the idea I have. So I prefer to avoid just overbloating the game and just having the game which is just very repetitive once you reach your hand. So prefer to it does say, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. And you're, you, when you're fine with the game, that should be enough, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, maybe there will continue to be some small update like bug fix or small quality of life addition if people are asking for stuff like that. But my my main goal will be to work on a new game after that. I have a very clear idea. I have uh, someone to work with. We have nice. started the the the, the, administrator, the administrative task of creating the company stuff like that. So it's very solid and right. Nice. I I, I can talk about the game later on <laughs> if you want. No, no. I I mean um I, I'm almost out of questions. So if you want to, I yeah sure. Uh, I can talk about that a bit later. So. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a discussion with someone because I have someone who knows the game very well in terms of the code, which yeah. is very fun of the game. Like she played three thousand hours on the game. Like it's Whoa. huge. Damn, it's huge. Like she she is one of the best players I know on the game, and she is very useful to balance the game. I, I mean, mm. she gets a lot of feedback, but I always try to take into account the fact that she's very good at the game to ban- to counterbalance that. Yeah, like when she said something is hard, I know it's very hard. <laughs> yeah, it's so I, I tried to turn it down a little bit. Three thousand hours is insane. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also a a very precious uh, demonstration of the amount of depth the game has in the hands. And like, if she can still find new thing to to build, like new combo, new stuff after three thousand hours, like I think I did a good job. But yeah, I would say so. That that is impressive. The, that, that, I mean, it's my own opinion. I try to not get too stuck in it because it's the best way to just don't improve the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another big uh, thing for me, it's, which is important, and you can compare the huge evolution in the lifetime of the game, it's the quality of life and the UX improvement to the game. Mm. Like to me, I'm a, I'm a quality of life uh, nerd. <laughs> I like new quality of life. Yeah, that's always important, I would say. Yeah, an example of creative place that I got added in 0.9. I don't remember if it's 0.9 or 0.9.1 mm-hmm. because it's our boss big build date. But it was a possibility to over some uh, stats, so uh, some stats or some uh, things that are underlined, and it displays a tooltip. So ah. you know what it does, how does it work. Ah, that's nice. Yeah, the sort of thing like all the stat menu, which is which has a ton of, uh, which have a breakdown of everything mm. that affects you or your character and stuff like that. Like, I want people to know what is happening in the background or how does the game calculate stuff. Yeah, so because super important. I find that in a lot of indie games in that are smaller like this, they, they don't include all the stats or they don't show all the numbers. So when you're trying to choose skills, you, you can't do an accurate... Like decision yeah. because you don't have all the the numbers. Yeah, that's something that's very frustrating. But yeah, there is as well. Um, I mean, sometimes it's uh, the, um, I uh, sorry, I don't have the word in in English. Like, it's what they want. Like, they want to obfuscate thing. Like, it's a bit of mystery. You try that stuff, but I to me, this is not where you should put the mystery. Like, when people want to unlock something or obtain something, they want to know what it does exactly. Like, exactly. that's what I want in a game when I play it, so I guess many people want it. Yeah. But I think this transparency also push people to go a lot into theory crafting. Yeah. And a bit too much surprise, but in fact, there is not much surprise to that. Like, 
a lot of the very hardcore player of Rogue Genesia are player who played a lot of Pass of Exile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they are not Vampers are players, they are Pass of Exile players. <laughs> Which is a bit funny to me. Yeah, but like, if, if you're gonna hide something, hide everything. But then again, you're on the internet. Everything is on the internet. If people want to know something, they're gonna test it and then post it on the internet. So yeah, yeah, exactly. it's kind of pointless to hide numbers. I think uh, just yeah, exactly. for the heck of it. Yeah, this is also why to me it's very important to have every information to the game. And I think it's up to one point where it literally killed the Wikipedia of the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there is an encyclopedia in the game when you have every soul card, every artifact, every mm. every monster that you unlock uh, to avoid spoiling, of course. Yeah. Every everything that you will encounter, the only thing that there is not there is uh, like the buff. Like some the buff are not displayed in the encyclopedia because of, of its work. Yeah, like yeah. It's complicated <laughs> technically to, to make it so but most of the time you can find the effect of buff in the description of cards or stuff like that. So it's not that important to me. Yeah. But everything is in the game, so you don't need to open a web page and search for the Wikipedia like in Minecraft or many, many games. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, you have so many items and so much stuff in the game, so it's kind of nice to, to easily see what everything does and then have the, the info screen with every, like, some, every little yeah. number. Yeah, so this got added slowly over time, like yeah. Encyclopedia, like... At first, there was nothing in that. <laughs> there was no soul card, no artifact, and stuff like that. Then I added the soul card. Then later, you could click on the soul card to get the upgrade or the components you need to obtain it. And then later on, I wanted to make a tree when you can see the card you in the tree. Oh, yeah, nice. it, yeah, it's easier to navigate. And now I'm using it myself to... I don't remember what is this card from. Or, like, like, like Just then, uh, when I was searching for the Lord card, I was... Booting up the game, searching. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's super helpful, even for me. Like there is too much, uh, too, uh, there is too much stuff into the game that I almost forgot what's in there. Yeah, but so, that's yeah, nice. yeah. you at least doesn't have to go to an external site. You can you can find it in the game. Exactly, and I get a bit off track because at first I was talking about the person who was doing three thousand, who is playing three thousand hours into the game. So <laughs> I get a bit off track. Oh. So about this, uh, yeah, I was talking, yeah, sh- there was a moment where we talked about the possibility of here working on a DLC. Mm. So that would add new content, like she has new idea and stuff like that, but I don't know if it's going to be done, like, it's in discussion, it will depend on how well the game will do on the release, on yeah. our one from the release, because we won't be able to do it if there is no budget for that. So, yeah, it can be, it's... The possibility is open. No. There is a possible exactly, where but it comes. Yeah. I personally won't work on new content or new magic content for the game later on. And I would have previous question that I did not really respond to, which very early into the interview, which is uh, why I did a roguelite and why a lot of people do roguelites. Yeah. yeah, at the beginning. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, of tracking a lot. Uh, there was another reason, which is most of the reason for indie, uh, indie developer to make roguelite, is that uh, it doesn't require require a lot of content. Like you can reuse a lot of things, and it's something that you need to do as an indie because you can't you can produce a new asset for everywhere, like a AAA studio, and even AAA reuse a lot of stuff everywhere. So it yeah. give a lot of playtime with very minimal uh, development time. Like, it's this sort of ratio, which is very like it in Roguelite from uh, in the developer, I think. Yeah, you're getting a lot of real estate for free. Like, you, you create one map and one set of enemies and then repeat, you get a lot of free game out of creating just a few assets. Yeah, uh, if you want the repetiting to feel good, you you want multiple sets, but yeah. you. Oh, absolutely. Use, um, the amount of content possible with the amount of work needed is very different in this case, but yeah. Yeah, but that's why you need to like evolve the game as the player gets better. Like that's what makes exactly, it exactly yeah yeah yeah. You start with a very easy game and just slowly get the skill up and yeah, yeah difficulty is another big subject I have think about when I was developing the game. Like my main target is like medium core player. Like I don't want to target casual player. Mm. I don't want to target hardcore player, but I want both of them to have fun in the game if they want. So I've added a lot of options in the game. To me, it's super important to have options like 
there is maybe 30, 40, 50 options in the game, like, I mean, not in terms of difficulty, but like visual, or if you want some text to display when you take damage, do you want the, the damage to be stacked? Uh, do you want screen shake? Do you want uh, some visual effect? How much foliage you want on the ground? Like, ton of stuff like that. I like, uh, I love option. Yeah. So there is a lot of option. And in terms of difficulty, like the main game, like just the F, E, rank, etc., is is made to be easy. Mm. Like, it's not too hard. If you know the game, you can always, like, even if you lose a run, you get stronger and you can try it again and slowly. Even if you're bad at the game, you can win the game by just overpowering it. Yeah. And for the hardcore player, which will go just go fly through all that, there is challenge. There is challenge which unlock which unlock new things. So it's such a good thing for the medium car player. And for the hardcore player, there is add more challenge, which is super hard. Don't unlock anything. So medium mm. car player, don't feel frustrated from that. Mm. But it's a very good challenge for a player who would like to present some would like to to optimize the game as much as they can. Yeah, I think that's so, perfect. Yeah. So it's important to have as much player as I want. Mm. And meta progression to me is a way to balance the game for every player. Yeah. And that's kind of what I like with Helldivers as well. They have like 10 difficulties now and, and they start off so easy and then gets ridiculous at the end. And then you really have to like micromanage everything and do a perfect build with four people. Like I, I think that's good to have in the game as well like a challenge yeah yeah it's it's important to make sure everyone can have the challenge to look for mm. like every everybody should have fun whatever they are good or bad at the game it's fine and that's why i found that when, when people complain have you played elder ring the dlc or anything like that like <laughs> that uh, i've not played uh, the dlc like i don't have time for it <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest, uh, most of the time uh, when I play a game, I'm playing another game, oh. which uh, is not released yet. Okay. Uh, some people know it, it's called Deadlock. <laughs> Deadlock. The next uh, game from Valve. Oh, I'm not going to nice. say anything about the game. But I... yeah, I have already 2,073 hours into the game. Jeez. <laughs> As the game is very good. That's a lot of hours. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's a very fun game, and yeah, it's taking every time I want to. I I don't work. I usually turn into the game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That that is a good like sign that it might be a good game. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but well, it's it's not a place to talk about the game. Like first, I don't want to speak uh, detail about the game because I I mean there is no NDA I could, but. It's the best way to get banned from the game, so I'm on the way. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, yeah it's a closed alpha. Yeah, stop it. But what but I yeah. wanted to come to was Elden Ring is got so much criticism for having so hard bosses in the DLC, and then you have videos now where people are one-shotting the bosses because they have yeah, gathered I mean, all the buffs in the game. And that's yeah, also it, like the perfect type of thing because you have so much flexibility in the game that you could potentially, with all the game knowledge, one-shot the bosses. Or you're just yeah. a bad player and goes head first against uh, against a wall and you're just I, dying. I mean, I mean, uh, I, mean the, I mean, Elden Ring was balanced a lot more than other Souls game because there is a lot of tools you can use. Like there is magic, there is summoning, there is uh, you you can grind the game to get stronger, and there is a bit yeah. of latency. I mean, even if you grind and take everything, you can optimize the game is still out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I played the Ring. Uh, I know the game is hard. I think the end is a bit uh, stale in comparison to the rest of the game, sadly. Like when you get to the snowy plateau and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it's still a very good game. I spent seventy hours on that when it was released back then. So yeah, I think it's an amazing game. I love it. But yeah, like it, it is another beast. Yeah, um... yeah. You 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 have to. To spend more a lot of time in in, in that to, to get used to it. Yeah, or or do as everyone else does: look it up on internet and one shot the bosses. Like you, you could just Google it. <laughs> that's work too. That's work too. Yeah. Um, I that's all the questions I had. Like, thank you so uh, much for taking your time to talk to me. Do you have anything else you want to bring up? Well, I can, I can talk about the next game, the idea about the game. What is it gonna be about? If you're interesting, I am interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to, sure. So, yeah, I mean, everything I will talk about is something I've 
talk about either in the comment of the dev blog or in some dev blog, like okay. nothing secret in there. So yeah, the next game is gonna be very different from Origins. Like nothing alike. Uh, so main idea behind the next game is what happens if you have a roguelite uh, idea, but you can bring back what you gain in Aaron. Like mm-hmm. this stuff, this sort of thing. And at the end of the day, I was like, it's just Tarkov. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you enter a run with the stuff you have. If you die, you lose everything, like in a roguelite. If you can escape, you get the new stuff. Mm. So it's sort of roguelike. It's sort of uh, Tarkov-like extraction shooter type yeah. things. In the end, it's a bit like a roguelike. Like <laughs> I found it funny in the end. So yeah, yeah. the idea is to start with uh, this idea PVE, why uh, PVE where you fight uh, NPC. Mm-hmm. Uh, because PvP is just so expensive because you need server and you need a very good anti-cheat because a big issue with this sort of game is like if you bring your stuff there and you die, it's super frustrating if it's because of a cheater. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the idea is to have a extraction shooter PvE co-op game. And the main difference about the other game is that your base is a factory game, like uh-huh. similar to Factorio. And the idea is that you go to run to obtain resources, uh, gear, but you can also make some uh, production line in your base. So you you can have a lot of gear. Yeah. So the main idea is to progress your base, your base, so you can always have some new stuff, and it doesn't feel too frustrating to die. Hmm. Like yeah, you lose your stuff, but you can have a few extra copy bags, and you can produce new stuff, and you have a good progression, like one. I issue I have with uh, extraction shooters is, is like if you kill a guy which is loaded as fuck, like you, well, you have everything into the game. Like you are full stuff, and there is no much progression to the game. Like for, for me, progression is like super important in game. Yeah, yeah. And having this, this base progression, like there is one in Tarkov, but it's not. Uh, it's very mobile game in Tarkov, like. You you spend some resources and you wait for it to, to be constructed and you have yeah. some bonus, but it doesn't feel good. I mean, I didn't play enough of Tarkov. Like, it's a bit too hardcore for me. Yeah, I didn't really like the progression system in that game either. Yeah, uh, the, yeah the idea is to have a very factory game on the base building side. And the good part is that each of the two components, like the Tarkov and the factory part, build into each other. Like, uh, when you wait for the factory to produce content, like in Factorio or other factory game, often you have set up your factory in and then you just wait because you have to wait it produce. So yeah. instead of waiting, you, you take your stuff and you go on a run. You get new stuff and you always have something to do. That's, that, I like that idea. Um, yeah. It, re- it reminds me a bit of, what is that game I played? Um... Outpost Infinity Siege. Uh, yeah, I played a bit of the game, but yeah, because there you have like your base, and you kind of setting it up for a, a, an attack, and then you're also out uh, gathering stuff. Like it's not yeah. really the same. It's not. It's, happening it's at... completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you still have the different project um, progression stuff. Uh, yeah, that game didn't really work at all. Uh, uh, like I like yeah, love the idea of that game. Like. Yeah, with you as well. You're setting up your base. You're getting production done, and then instead of waiting, you're going out to find stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I like the idea of the game Outpost uh, Infinity Siege, but I played it and to me, it's bad execution of the game. Like, yeah, there it's is a lot execution. of objectiveness everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's sad execution. because the idea is like, oh, it's so cool, and then uh, it's yeah. so bad. So, yeah, because Everyone. I really wanted that. Like, you're preparing for a fight, and as your base is kind of building, you're out looking for stuff and preparing, uh, gathering even more resources to prepare for an attack. Yeah. But, but it's but in, just a bad extraction shooter. Yeah, but in the next game, like, you, your base is never under attack. Like, in the idea, you get stranded on an empty dimension, which is your base, and you just teleport from dimension to dimension to just uh, loot them. Like, yeah. like it, you, you're basically the, the combine from uh, Half-Life Universe. <laughs> <laughs> you you get there, uh, you you take everything, you get away. Uh, thank you for the resources. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea is where you start up, you have some scrappy scrappy weapons, scrappy armor stuff mm-hmm. like 
stuff you can find in a pile of uh, of scrap and later on you can have some high tech gear like some drones that's for you like very futuristic fps like or like third person uh, or, or top there down were, there, there was a question about what the viewpoint of the game like I know that if we want for a FPS, it will work much more because FPS is popular. Mm. But the issue is that you need a lot of money to make a FPS. <laughs> that, that, that look good, that feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's like you need too much content and we want to have the resources for that. Yeah. So we go for a top-down view. Mm. Uh, a good reference uh, to how we want the game to feel is Synthetic. Synthetic 2. Uh, wait, I will send you the... The the game feel of the game is insanely good. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see it. Yeah. yeah, but that ain't bad. That looks nice. Yeah, it, it's it's a very cool game. I, I recommend anyone to to play it. And it's even have a co-op. And yeah, for, for now, lots of players are just waiting for the game to reach one point zero thing because. It's been it's been in early access for a bit of time, but the game is progressing very well. Um, yeah, twenty twenty one it entered early access. Yeah, that's a while. Um, but the, the game is very good in its current state, so mm. I still recommend. But yeah, it's it's a big reference to how we want the gameplay to feel on moment to moment, like when you walk mm. around and you can shoot and aim with a slightly hardcore gameplay in how you feel like you don't move super fast you you, you are not the doom guy <laughs> <laughs> you are just someone yeah, maybe in late game when you have some uh, exoskeleton stuff like that yeah maybe you can just uh, fly through uh, everything but yeah we want the gameplay to be a bit slow so you have to be careful mm. you have to check your anger stuff like that so sounds good yeah but for now it's super early yeah. and the you game have to finish up this game first yeah, first I finished <laughs> the game. Like the next game is like we just put idea, but I didn't start working on that mm. at all because it would be weird to me to start working on a new game with the one in Alexis is not finished. Like it's a bad idea. Yeah, and to me, it, it doesn't it feel sense the wrong message as well. Yeah, uh, like, which is why for now my full focus is on Rogue is yeah, I want to finish it, and then yeah. I will I will focus on my next game then. Nice, sounds awesome. Uh... And maybe we can do this again when you have something for that game. That would be nice. Oh, I would be glad. <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Like this was awesome. About, uh, thank you for contacting me for for interview. I mean, I'm I'm always open to interview. So thank you. Like yeah, I I've been doing YouTube for a year now almost. So I I try to do different things but focus on indie games. So this is kind of cool to get to interview and I yeah get some insight into. The mind behind the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's always interesting to, to know how, who is the person who makes the game. Like, you, you can feel how a bit of the personality into the game. Like, every game is a network. I mean, for AAA game, it's a bit different because there is so much people. But yeah. for small indie game, especially when they are solo developed, yeah. you, you can feel a lot of the personality of the developer in the game. Oh, definitely. Especially when you're doing early access and including the people that are playing the game. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, it becomes kind of part of you, uh, and like the, the idea and how 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 you implement them. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you too. Good luck with the game when it finally releases. Thank you. I hope it will go well because <laughs> I it will allow me to make a better game next. <laughs> it would surely go well. Yeah. <laughs>